Greetings, 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 uh, my brothers and greetings, my sisters. This is um, this is Brother West coming back to you um, this Wednesday, this Wednesday, uh, Year of the Lord, 2021. And I, as I often say, if you woke up on the wrong side of the bed, lay back down, lay back down. And when you get back up, when you get back up, um, things are going to be different. When you get back up, God is going to turn it around. And see, the laying back down uh, symbolically means that you're going to rest. In other words, you're going to give it to God. The thing that, that, that you've been wrestling with all night, the things that the thing that you've been dealing with all night, the things that's been fighting you all night, you are going to give it to God. Whatever kind of circumstance, whatever kind of condition, whatever kind of problem, whatever kind of hurt, whatever kind of sickness, uh, whatever whatever you're believing and whatever you, you're, you're hoping and you're trusting God to fix, to change, you're going when, and you're laying down, you're saying, God, I'm going to give it to you. And what do that mean? That means to totally surrender it by not thinking about it, by not talking about it, by not calling nobody on the phone. None of that. None of that. Just, just, just trust God. Just say, God, you know the situation. God, you know my condition. God, you know my circumstance. And, and God, God, I'm asking that you fix it because you said that you would if I trust you. If I lean not to my understanding, but in all my ways acknowledge you, you would direct my path. And so, God, I'm giving it to you. And so that's all you got to do. Just say, God, I give it to you. Those that are listening to me, that you need God, that you need a move, that you need healing, that you need direction. You, you're, you're at a place, you're at an enough place. You're at a place where you said and you're saying, I, enough. I'm tired, enough. I'm tired of feeling this way, enough. I'm tired of going this, going in this direction enough. I'm tired of uh, circling and seeing like I'm doing the same thing and getting the same result, feeling empty. I'm feeling like um, you're feeling like uh, things are wasteful. You wasted your time. Uh, you're hurt. You're tired of being hurt. You're tired of being angry. You're tired of being bitter. You're tired of being mad. All of that. Lay back down and say, God, God, I trust you. And that's all, that's all God is looking for. He just wants you to trust him. Because when you trust him, then that gives him the power. See, but when you don't trust him, then his hands are tied. See, some of you that listen to me, you say you trust God, but you don't give God the power. You're still trying to fix stuff. You're, you're still trying to mentally and, and trying to figure out things. When God says, trust me, and, and, lean, not to your, and lean not to your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Is that all right? And this is what I want to um, kind of just briefly talk about a little bit or just mention. Mention uh, by, by way of insight, by way of uh, words of encouragement along the lines of um, mental health. Mental health. And what is mental health? Mental health is, is basically when your mind has been attacked. And see, mental, uh, and people think it's something natural, but it's a spiritual thing. It is a spiritual attack. It is spiritual attack against your mind that comes against your psychological makeup, where it attacks how you think, how you act, and how you feel. And what that is, is oftentimes it comes from being hurt, uh, being rejected, Something happening and something taking place where you got the short end of the stick. You got the short end of the stick and you was left there. And you're trying to wrap your mind around how to fix it. You're trying to wrap, wrap, your, wrap your mind around how did it get to this? How did this take place? You're trying to figure it out. And so, and so even Apostle Paul discovered he says that in his members dwell no, uh, dwell no good thing. He says that he find in his flesh a new law, a new law. And this thing wars against his mind. That that he would do, he, he don't do it. And the things that he don't do, that he do. And what it is, is that it's the war. It's a spiritual war. The enemy is warring. 
is attacking, is, is trying to beat down, trying to break down your mind. Where you get to a place where you, you, you don't know if you're coming or going. And see what it is, what it is when it comes to patterns and behavior. When it comes to patterns of behavior, now, with a habit, it takes, what, 30 days to start a habit, 30 days to break a habit. And see, see, it's like a habit is formed from repetition, doing the same thing every day, saying the same thing every day. That's what forms a habit. That's what, because we're creatures of habit. And so, so that's why it's so important to really uh, examine yourself but also pay attention, pay attention to what you're around and pay attention to what you listen to. You got to pay attention to what you listen to because if, see, because you have to look at a habit, you have to look at a habit, bondage. If you keep listening to a same type of song, if you keep listening to a same type of conversation, eventually you're going to believe it. Eventually, it's going to talk to you so much where you're going to believe what you hear, where you start dreaming about it. You start thinking about it constantly. And so many of you that are listening to me, when it comes to the reason why your mind is so attacked and, and so under attack, it is because you keep thinking about the same thing. The same thing. That same negative thing has indoctrinated you. That same the negative thing has put you under a spell where you don't listen to it so much. Now it's in your spirit. That's why Jesus has always told, just told his disciples to take heed how you hear. Take heed how you hear. So in other words, take heed what you're listening to. Pay attention. <coughs> because what you listen to will dictate how you respond, how you act, how you feel. There are so many people, they talk about how they feel. And it's the same feeling every day because the moment that they got hurt from that feeling, they never found closure. You never found it. You never asked God to heal you. You never tried to turn away from that situation. But you constantly thought about that thing because you in awe of the fact that you found yourself in this situation. And so, and so, but see, but God want to pull you out of that. Pull you out of those voices. That's what it is. That's what it is. Even with anger. Anger is not an emotion. Anger is energy. Anger comes from something. Anger comes from something that's trapped. Something that didn't go your way. Some kind of hurt. And anger feeds on that. When you're angry, and one of the indications that you're angry is because something hadn't been resolved. Something hadn't been resolved. Even the scripture says that when you pray, but if you remember that your brother got all against you, leave that gift at the altar and go be reconciled. And see, God ain't gonna, God ain't gonna, will not accept your gift or receive your gift if you got issues, if you got something in your heart against someone, or if you know that you got a situation with something or someone and you don't try to fix it. How can, how can he? Even the scripture says that how can you say that you love God, the Father, who you've never seen, never seen. Or how can you ask him to forgive you when you see your brother and sister here every day that you hate? God ain't gonna do it. And some of you are listening, you, you're deceiving yourself. You think that you think that the stuff that's in your heart, you think that God's gonna forget it. The things that you're dealing with, the things that you that in your mind that you want to do certain things to a certain situations, you want to get revenge. Uh, uh, you want to get do this person, you want to hurt them just like they hurt you. You think God going to forget it? Now, can, how, you, how can you have the love of God thinking like that? Wanting to punish people for the things they've done to you. That's not the will of God. Another thing is not the will of God or the seed of God is jealousy. Jealousy, hurt, gossip. Gossip don't come from God. You know, see, some, some that listen to me, you're so hurt that you just got to talk. You got to tell somebody what's going on. And and the sad thing about it is always, it's always you the victim. It's always somebody else done done it to you. And when you tell the story, you only tell part of the story, half the story. But you, you never tell the part of what part did you play. 
How did you allow us to get to this point? See, the first the first stage of deliverance is when you first face it and admit it. I'm the problem. I got the issue that I need help from. And that's deliverance. That's the beginning of deliverance because when you say that then, you're catching it. You're seeing it. You're resting it. You're facing it. Things are not going to change in your life until you face it. Until you face it and think and analyze and, and just think and, and think about the future. Every action does a reaction. Everything you do, there's going to be a consequence. So think about the consequence before you do the action. You might be emotional. You might be upset. You might be angry. But don't allow your emotions and your being upset and your anger to control you or to make you do something that you know is not right. Then you go back and want to apologize. Don't do that. Why keep doing that? Why I keep doing that? Stop allowing your emotions and things that, that, that talk to you a certain kind of way control you. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And a stranger they won't follow. And see, God, when God speaks to you, God is not going to speak to you that's going to bring pain. He's not going to speak to you that's going to bring confusion. He's not going because he's not the, he's not he's not the author of confusion. And so the voice that speaks to you is not the voice of God. See, that's what happens when you get hurt. Your hurt begin to talk to you. When things happen, you, you keep thinking about it so much that it forms a relationship. Your mind, your mind, and the your mind and that hurt becomes a forms a relationship. You talk every day. You talk every day. You, see what it is? You're hoodwinked. You're bound. You're tied to that situation. You're tied to that circumstance. And it was crazy in some cases. The people or the person that you might be angry at or upset at may not even have no idea. You want to know why? Because they done moved on. They done moved on. They done forgot about it. Maybe they didn't purposely forgot it. Maybe they did. But whatever it is, you got to let go of it. You got to let go of it. That's what creates it and that's what causes that mental condition. It's when you keep holding on to stuff. You keep holding on to being rejected. You keep holding on to stuff not going your way. When you get to a point where you just want to explode. That's not the will of God. Not the will of God. God want to deliver you. Are you listening to me? God want to deliver you today. Mind, body, and soul. He want to deliver you from your mind. From your appetites. From your moods. From your emotions. He want to. He want to. He want to take it. He want to take it away. Say, take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy. And my bird is alight. He want to take, he want to come to your mind. See, the scripture said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And you renew your mind by being in relationship with God, reading his word. That's what's going to take your mind. That's what's going to help your, your health, your mental state of mind. Was in Isaiah. I think it's Isaiah 26 and 3. He will keep them in perfect peace. Those who mind have stayed up on him. Now the peace ain't going to come if you ain't thinking about him. If you ain't hearing his word. The scripture tells us to, to set our affections on things that are above. Things that can't, uh, uh, things that can't be uh, eat, eat away. Set our treasures on things that are uh, spiritual things, heavenly. The moths can eat, get that. Nobody can steal that. That's your relationship. God wants you to have a relationship with him. Not a relationship with the television. Not a relationship with just with people. But God wants you to have a relationship with him. That's the only way that he's going to be able to break those things that are pressing in your mind. Is that all right? Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you. God, I bless you. God, for this is the day that you made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it, God. Those that are listening and that, 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 that are here, God, set their mind free from that mental condition, the mental pressure. God, they feel like they're going crazy. They're about to lose their mind because of those voices. 
But God, you said to lean to you, turn to you, and you remove those voices. Whosoever shall call on your name shall be saved, God. Rescue their mind. God, but they got to call on your name. God, they got to ask for help. God, you said you're very present help in a time of trouble. And God, they're in trouble. God, they're in a condition, God. God, as they cry out to you, deliver their mind from the oppressor of their thoughts, even from themselves, their greatest enemies of their own household, their mind, their thoughts, being so hard on themselves, kicking themselves for making that mistake, wishing they can go back and change the time, change the situation. God, let them, God, teach them how to forgive themselves. In order to forgive anything, they got to learn how to forgive themselves for the mistake. God, send a revelation. God, send an epiphany. God, send an eye-opening experience right now in Jesus' name, God, we pray. Amen and amen. I hope this is okay. And just go to God. Go to God. If you're tired of being oppressed, if you're tired of being beat, you're tired of being attacked in your mind, go to God. Go to God and leave it there. And see what it is God want to break habits. See, one of the things is habits. There's some bad habits that many of you that listen to me, you've accumulated. This is why you're still stuck in a certain place. This is why. He want to break those habits. He want to break those, those ways, the things that you've accumulated, that you picked up, that, that you thought that brought relaxation, that you thought that brought peace. But all it's doing is, is bringing pain. And see, because you think that if you ignore the situation, you think that it's going to get better. No, you got to deal with it. And the way to deal with it is to give it to God. Whatever it is that's ailing you, give it to God. Is it okay? And I will say this, for those that God speak to, to those that who are partners, to those that um, that support my ministry, that love my ministry, God speak to you today. Please sow a seed. If God speaks to you today, whatever that seed is, and I promise you, whatever you sow, it's going to come back to you. Press down, shaking together, and running over. Happy Wednesday. God bless you.